Hey everybody, I wanted to make some review videos for test three and this one's going to go over material that's in unit eight. That was the unit on geologic time. I'm going to use my handy dandy handwritten overheads here and the geologic time unit really had three parts to it. The first part talked about relative dating. So I just want to review the most important of our relative dating principles. The first one is the principle of superposition. And remember, we only apply that to sedimentary rocks. The sedimentary rocks accumulate in layers, one above the other. So the oldest rock unit is on the bottom. And as we go toward the top, the layers of sedimentary rock get younger and younger. The other really important principle of relative dating was the principle of cross-cutting relationships. So on this kind of ugly drawing here, we have sedimentary rock layers and we have this body of intrusive igneous rock. Now, intrusive igneous rock forms when magma moves upward through the crust and then cools and crystallizes down within the crust. So these sedimentary rocks that are cut by this body of intrusive igneous rock had to be there first, right? And then the magma came in, cooled, and crystallized to form the intrusive igneous rock body. Now, a body of intrusive igneous rock that's the size of maybe an individual mountain peak, that's a, it's called a stock or a pluton. We might have a little bit of magma that came up along a fracture over here, and that would be an igneous dike a smaller body of intrusive igneous rock that cuts across the rocks that are adjacent to it. When we have intrusive igneous rock bodies, we might see contact metamorphosed rock next to the body of intrusive igneous rock. Well, anyway, the important thing to remember about the principle of cross-cutting relationships is Anything that cuts across other rock is younger than all the rocks it cuts. So we know this igneous rock body is younger than these three layers of sedimentary rock that it cuts across. Faults are also cross-cutting features. Here we see a fault that has displaced sedimentary rock layers, so they had to be there in order to be shifted due to that fault forming, right? So the fault is younger than all the rock units it displaces or cuts across. Let's try some practice with those ideas before we move on. Let's check out this diagram. It's a little bit neater. So we have some clearly sedimentary rock layers and the sedimentary rock layers have some different things cutting across. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can put the different labeled items, that's rocks A, B, C, D, E, and fault F in order from oldest to youngest. The way I approach these problems is I look for the oldest rock first, and that's rock A. It's on the bottom of the stack of sedimentary rock units. So we say that the oldest rock is A, and then we just go up through that stack of sedimentary rock layers. A, then C, then D was deposited, and then E was deposited after that. Then we have our cross-cutting igneous rock unit here. That's B. And we have the fault F. Well, the fault F happened next. It offset those sedimentary rock layers. And I know that B, the igneous intrusion, that igneous dike cutting up through there, is the youngest one because I can see that igneous rock cuts across the fault. Now I think I only mentioned it in passing in the videos, but it's a pretty important principle we have here. That's the principle of faunal succession. 
William Smith first demonstrated back in the late 1700s through early 1800s how the fossil content of sedimentary rock changed systematically over time. This is before Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution. But it's pretty clear when we look at a stack of sedimentary rock layers uh, that contain a lot of fossils that the fossil content changes over time. So we can use the fossil content of our sedimentary rock layers to tell us something about when the rock was formed. And our geologic time scale, which is the second part of Unit 8, it uses certain major changes in the fossil content of rocks to divide up all of Earth history into different subunits of time. So let's have a look at that. Well, here I've sketched out the geologic time scale. And remember, what it does is it takes all of Earth history from the present day to when Earth first formed 4.6 billion years ago or 4,600 million years ago. And it splits it up into different subintervals of time. The hugest chunk is down here in the Precambrian which encompasses all the time from 4,600 million years ago to 540 million years ago. And the more recent part of the geologic time scale is called the Phanerozoic Eon. That goes from 540 million years ago to the present. Why was this dividing line chosen? Because the rocks of Precambrian age had pretty much no fossil content. We have no evidence of life on Earth before about 3,500 million years ago or so. And it was pretty simple bacterial life until we got to uh, less than 2 billion years ago when there's signs of early algae having evolved. And it wasn't until the tail end of the Precambrian that we got multicellular animals. They were all soft bodies, which is why they don't fossilize well. But the dawn of the Phanerozoic Eon was the evolution of creatures with hard parts like shells. So it's not hard to find fossils in sedimentary rocks of Phanerozoic age. The Phanerozoic is subdivided into three eras. The earliest is the Paleozoic era, the middle era is called the Mesozoic, and the most recent part of Earth history is the Cenozoic era. We have some highlights here for the types of organisms that are represented in the fossil content of these different eras, in particular the first appearances of things like fish, amphibians, and reptiles. The earliest mammals didn't evolve until the early part of the Mesozoic, but the reptiles diversified before the mammals got going. So all the dinosaurs and things like that, they were around during much of the Mesozoic era. So that's why the Mesozoic era is sometimes called the age of reptiles. Now after those uh, large reptiles like the dinosaurs went extinct at the end of the Mesozoic, that set the stage for mammals to diversify. So I've underlined some of the important terms and circled the important dates on the geologic time scale. Things for you to know for test three.